Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to stay here. Uh, we've uh, started the webinar about project management for analog emissions with Karen Brunemann. Uh, I'm Professor Julio Rezend in Brazil. Uh, this is an initiative of part of, of the activities uh, from the Mission 99, organized by uh, Space Analog Station Habitat Mart. Also, is an initiative from uh, Federal University from Rio Grande do Norte State from Brazil, and also Rio Grande do Norte Space Forum, Mars Society Brazil, and Space Renaissance International Latin America. Uh, Karen Brunemann has degrees in psychology and business information systems. Uh, she also studied intercultural business communication, is currently pursuing a doctoral degree in management. She has 30 years of experience working and managing international projects uh, in different industries and also focusing in the space sector for the past years. Also, uh, Karen is a consultant in project management in many space projects, also uh, collaborating as a flight planner for Austrian Space Forum, AMAD-20, Analog Mars Mission and has participated in, in uh, analog missions, all, uh, all in some missions organized by Abdati Marti and all the, also uh, projects uh, related to echo in country space from Slovakia and Israel. Also, she had uh, done a lot of lectures in many different universities. Uh, also, I'd like to say thanks to, to Karen uh, for a great support to Abdati Marti in a great uh, uh, partnership and collaboration. And uh, Kelly, you, you are very welcome to start your presentation, okay? Uh, also to everyone, I'd like to say that uh, this, uh, this, this presentation uh, we are recording and will be sharing in the, in the Abtati Marti uh, uh, YouTube channel, okay? And have available to everyone. I'd like to say good luck to you carrying your presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Julio. Um, yeah, um, I've already been introduced. Thanks for your kind words, uh, Professor. Um, just a very brief introduction of myself, um, why I'm doing this topic today, why we're talking about project management in analog Mars missions or moon missions. Yeah, I have. I have been a certified project management professional for many, many years. I'm also a certified scrum master and uh, I'm also working in project management. Um, I'm currently, for example, working in one project in, in Borospace, which is a small a Slovak startup uh, building suborbital rockets and developing sustainable rocket fuel for, for the European Space Agency. On the other hand, I have had a lot of training in, in analog missions, mainly from the Austrian Space Forum. Um, and I have participated in, in four virtual analog missions in, of Habitat Mart. Um, and um, I was also a flight planner in the Amadi 20 mission of the Austrian Space Forum, which took place last October. I have been in the mission um, support center. Um, yeah, do I want to go to Mars? The answer is no, because I cannot imagine living with closed windows for one and a half years. Do I want to go to space? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I had applied as a candidate, crew candidate for the moon mission. I was kicked out in round two, unfortunately, but I have now uh, the next uh, opportunity that is coming up is uh, Virgin Galactic R actually ruffling uh, two seats on their uh, flight to space. So I, I bought 1000 tickets just to be on the safe side. <laughs> so yes, I definitely do want to go to space. Right, um, today we, are, we will be talking about a bit about project management applications in space. Um, some aspects of project management and how they apply to, to space and the contribution of analog missions in this respect. Um, please bear in mind, we only have uh, one hour time today, so it'll be a very high level overview 
Um, I could talk uh, a week without a pause um, about these topics, but um, this is meant to be a, an introduction into the topic. So please bear with me. Um, the, and uh, uh, I hope you appreciate that you cannot go too much into depth. Yeah. So why do we do project management in space? Uh, let's let's start with the very basics. What is a project? Yeah, a project has certain characteristics. Yeah, projects are temporary. That means they have a defined beginning. They have a defined end. They produce unique results. So the the um, the outcome of a project is always something that has not been there before. So. If, if we look into the space industry, yeah, Starship is definitely a project, yeah, constructing a totally new, uh, a new spaceship from scratch. Falcon 9, it's pretty much business as usual. It's not a project anymore because <laughs> SpaceX are, doing, are, do, are, are producing and launching Falcon 9 rockets um, this year almost on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Also, um, projects have a, um, an organization for themselves, which is different from the everyday organization. And uh, one example is, is, for example, is from the Austrian Space Forum. This is a, a rough overview of the mission organization of the Amade 20 mission. So it has its own organization. So is our analog Mars missions or analog space missions projects? Yes, because they do fulfill all these criteria and many more. Now, what is project management? Um, project management is basically the application of skills, of knowledge, um, methods, tools, techniques to lead the project to, to success. It's the management of tasks, resources, and processes within the project. Um, project management happens throughout the project life cycle. Yeah, that's not just, oh, let's plan the project and then let's start to manage it. This is not how it works. It's from day one till the last day, it has to be managed. And of course, project management aims at achieving defined objectives, yeah. So the objectives for an analog mission are, for example, to, to run a set of, of specified experiments. Um, another objective can be to actually um, um, publish an article about the findings of, of a specific mission. Yeah, so a, a mission cannot just have one single objective, but it can have many objectives and project management has to make sure that, that all of them are achieved. Yeah. Um, project management is a recognized and strategic competence. It's an independent career path and it's a subject of training and education. Uh, why am I pointing this out? If you wanna be a project manager, don't study engineering, don't study information systems, study project management. It's a totally different career path. And uh, if, if, if you want to, uh, to, um, to build a house, you would not uh, hire somebody who studied mechanical engineering. You would hire someone who studied architecture probably. And uh, if you want, your projects manage, you should hire really um, educated project management professionals. Um, this is one of the reasons why so many projects go wrong because uh, they, have, they have a project manager by name, but not by nature. So we have to take care of that. So what are the benefits of applying structured project uh, management to analog space missions. Uh, first of all, it's, um, it improves the risk management. Um, and that comes from two aspects, from really two perspectives. 
First of all, as project managers, we are trained to discover risk, to manage risk, to mitigate risks. But also if we apply um, methods and frameworks that have been um, developed and used by um, millions of project managers all around the world, um, we can be sure that we have developed um, some best practices and that, that we follow these best practices. So that will also contribute to, to a lower risk of, of an analog mission. Yeah. Also project management methods uh, ensure that we have a consistent communication and efficient collaboration across specializations and and research organizations. Yeah. In an analog mission, we have uh, we have uh, people from very different backgrounds. We ha might have um, horticulturalists uh, working on uh, on uh, greenhouses, and uh, we might have biologists. We might have geologists working on experiments. We have psychologists, and uh, project management gets all the make sure that all of these. Um, work in a coher coherent team, have consistent communication, use the same language, not only English versus uh, Brazilian Portuguese, but uh, to have the, the technical terms um, in their field so that we know that we're talking about the same things when we are collaborating. And then of course, missions all, often uh, collaborate across different organizations. Yeah, that's for example, um, a, a space agency is involved. Um, the actual habitat uh, is involved. Um, universities are involved in the research. So um, as project managers, we have to ensure that, that communication works uh, smooth be between and across uh, boundaries. And because we're applying uh, best practice, um, there is a better chance of achieving the mission goals. And obviously it leads to increased professionalism and team growth, team growth, not in quantity that the team gets bigger, but the team gets, gets better. It's a qualitative growth in, in, uh, in missions. And of course we want to learn from these missions. Yeah. So as an example, um, NASA has, has founded a program project and engineering leadership academy. And they said, um, NASA lives in the project world. We have so-and-so, um, such and such big budget. And every penny of it is spent on missions which are accomplished through programs and projects. A program is by the way, um, a, uh, a, um, an accumulation of similar projects. Yeah, so if they launch three rockets, each of them is a project and the entire rocket launch um, is a program. Yeah. And um, NASA um, implemented the program and project management initiative um, in part as a response to addressing cultural and training deficit, deficits uh, in the aftermath of the space shuttle um, Challenger disaster. They have realized that with, uh, with state-of-the-art project management, this, uh, this would not have happened. Yeah. So they, they, le they learned their lesson and they are really also uh, closely cooperating with the Project Management Institute um, these days. Okay, so this is um, why we need uh, project management and what it is and what a project is. Um, let's look a little bit at uh, what do we do in project management? What, it's, what is it all about? Yeah, and uh, first of all, a project has certain project process groups. It uh, has an initiating process group. It has planning processes, executing processes, monitoring and controlling processes, and also closing processes. 
Now, how, what does this look like in an analog mission? Yeah. For example, initiating is basically we have an idea. Yeah. We put something on paper. We have a rough, rough sketch. Yeah, we want to do a mission. We want to have a, a couple of experiments, and uh, and uh, we we need to find uh, some some analog uh, habitat or site where we can actually um, actually uh, uh, conduct this project. Yeah, in the planning phase, yeah, we look out. What do we need? Where can we go? What is the best uh, best uh, place? What is the best du duration for the for our mission? Um, how much money will we need for the mission? And where do we get it from? Uh, which organizations have to be involved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, in planning, we take the idea we had during the initiation. We take it a bit further to the next step, and we we have a an idea about uh, what the project should should look like. Um, then, of course, we conduct the analog, analog mission. Yeah, we have the analog astronauts uh, conducting all the experiments, doing the research, uh, being in isolation in the habitat, doing the EVAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And while they are doing that. Um, we monitor and control and control them. Yeah. Um, the difference between monitoring and controlling is monitoring. We are collecting data. Yeah. For example, um, what? How strong is the wind in the in the habitat or around the habitat on a specific day? And in controlling, we check. Oh, can we still fly the drone? Yeah. Is it is it not too windy? Um, and such things. So uh, this happens throughout the, the executing phase that we are really monitoring and controlling what is happening in, in the mission at the moment. And last not least, closing. Uh, and the closing of an analog mission can actually be achieved by opening the door of the habitat. <laughs> so uh, it's... Um, Closing the project, but opening the the, the habitat. Um, of course, that's not the usually not the end of the project because uh, in project uh, in the project closing processes, um, we also document the findings of all the experiments. We might want to publish some articles. Now we collect lessons, or we collect and implement lessons learned. Um, um, we, uh, we, we, uh, we analyze data, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is basically what a, what a project uh, looks like from the first idea to the last uh, published paper in analog missions. Yeah. So during these uh, five process groups, there are a lot of things that we have to manage. Yeah. And uh, this is, is, uh, is taken from the Project Management Institute, from the uh, Project Management Body of Knowledge, but it also applies to other uh, project management methods and frameworks. Yeah. Um, we need, in an analog mission, we need to look at the scope. Yeah. How many experiments would we like to to include in our mission, and how big can they be? Yeah, um, can we can we take um, experiments on that require six people, uh, and and uh, take at least one month? Yeah, what is what is included, and what is excluded from a specific mission? Um, we need to manage the schedule. Yeah, this is, of course, when does the project start? When does it end? But also, which milestones do we have to achieve at, at which uh, date? Um, which activities are depending on each other? Yeah, I can't go into isolation with analog astronauts if the habitat is not ready. Yeah, so as project management managers, we also have to see that 
that everything um, is planned uh, according to, to the immediate needs. Yeah. Then, of course, we have to look at the costs of the mission. Yeah. Um, how much does it cost? Not only the mission, but there is also auxiliary costs maybe for uh, bringing people to the, to the site, bringing equipment to site. Yeah, there can be transport costs. There can be um, costs um, for customs clearance if it's an international mission and we have to, to, to send, uh, send uh, equipment across borders. Yeah, there can be insurance costs if we work with a very expensive uh, experiments that we need to ensure the, the equipment, et cetera, et cetera. So um, again, this is, is something that uh, that we have to calculate in the mission. Also, what does it cost to, to feed people during the mission? Yeah. They want to, they, people have this habit, they want to eat every day. So we need to, to provide food for them. We need to provide accommodation, etc. We have to also manage the quality of the mission as a project. Yeah. How, how close to reality are we? in in this uh, in this uh, this simulation do we do we have uh, real spacesuits or spacesuit simulators or do we put on a motorbike helmet to simulate um, that uh, that we are in a spacesuit yeah so all this is uh, is is managed um, in the in the mission as a project and also um, the quality of the experiments. Yeah. What information do we need to conduct the experiments uh, properly? Um, what equipment do we need for certain experiments? Yeah. This all has to be um, has to be taken into account in in a in an analog mission project. Then, of course, managing the resources, and this is related to human resources. It's related to physical resources like equipment, uh, the buildings, um, machinery, uh, in, in the spacesuits, um, and also, not, of course, financial resources. Yeah. If we have money, for example, we get a donation, how do we spend it? Where, where, do, you, where do we use the money? What do we use it for? Yeah, so it has to be considered. Um, then of course, managing communication. Um, which language will we speak in, in the mission, if it's an, especially if it, it's an international mission? How do we communicate? Yeah, do we say yes or no? Yes and no, or do we say um, affirmative and negative? Yeah. Um, also, do we have uh, real time communication or do we have communication delay? Um, if we are in insulation, in isolation, um, are the astronauts allowed to communicate uh, with their families back home or are they not? So all these, these aspects of the mission have to be managed. And then of course, one of the most important um, project management areas is risk management. We have seen in the past that also analog missions can be quite risky. We have seen people injured and missions being canceled because of that. We have uh, seen a lot of psychological issues during analog missions. Yeah. And uh, as Professor Julio just uh, mentioned before, um, in the uh, in Habitat Martin, the cave habitat, yeah, there is a risk of, or there was a risk of, uh, of it being flooded if it, if it rains. Yeah. So uh, and now working on, on fixing this. Um, so we don't have an underwater habitat there. Um, but um, there are a lot of risks to be managed. Uh, there is a risk that we lose financing. Yeah. It's not only risk to, to people, it's also risk to the mission as such. 
um, there is a risk that equipment gets damaged or gets lost some, somewhere. It can all happen. Yeah. And uh, this is a, is a very, very important area of, of managing, uh, managing projects. And uh, um, the first law of risk management is in projects is, of course, everyone has to be involved in identifying the risks. Yeah, it's not something that three people uh, uh, do in, a, in half a day somewhere in the office, but the entire mission team has to be involved in risk identification uh, to make it really uh, work. Yeah. Um, procurement, where, where do we get everything from? Where do we get uh, paint for the habitat from? Where do we get um, batteries for, for our uh, equipment from? Where do we get a rover from? Where do we get a quad from? Um, everything has to be sourced. Where do we get food from? And um, so uh, we also have to, to uh, take care of, of that area. How do we get the stuff that we need into, into our habitat and, and into our mission? Um, we don't only procure physical products, we can also procure so services yeah, like consulting or training um, that also falls into that area. And uh, then we have uh, the stakeholder management. Now we need, to in, we need to identify who is involved in our analog mission. Yeah? Um, there are analog astronauts, there is a flight director, there is a mission, uh, mission control team, there is a flight planning team, uh, there are experimenters, there are universities, the space agency is, might be involved or even several space agencies, there might be collaboration between different analog habitats. So um, it's important to identify the stakeholders and stakeholder is is anyone who has interest um, in or can influence the project or the mission. Yeah, so it's not just the analog astronauts. Yeah, it is, uh, it, it's, it can be environmental groups who are concerned about the activities in the habitat. Yeah, it can be the military who don't want you to be in there. In their uh, in their area with with your uh, EVAs, uh, things like that. So and then, of course, everything has to be integrated, yeah. Because if you change something in one area, it it can lead to changes in the, in another area. Yeah. For example, you want to to in, change something in procurement. Yeah. You say, oh, we are going to to buy some new uh, quad to get around, that immediately has an impact on your costs. Yeah? It might even have an impact on your schedule because you have to wait until it gets delivered. Yeah, It might have an impact on your scope because, oh, now we have a quad, now we can actually do experiments further away from the habitat. Yeah? It, it, it ha can have impact on the risk because um, maybe the analog astronauts don't uh, have not been trained yet to, to actually um, drive a quad. Yeah. So everything has to be integrated in the end into, into a coherent uh, project. Yeah. And if this is not enough work already, a project is always orbited by changes. Yeah because a project always creates something that has never been there before. So that is, there is a change. Yeah. Also within a mission, we expect uh, changes to happen. Yeah. For example, we have planned uh, an experiment to fly a drone and then on, on day, day three, and then it's too windy. So we have to change the schedule. We have to change it to a day five or day six. Yeah. Um, or an analog astronaut uh, 
um, sprains their ankle and they cannot go on EVA anymore, then they have to stay in the habitat and somebody else has to go on, on EVA. So it's a, it's a constant change in, in project management. And uh, as project managers, we have to not only live with the change, but really embrace it and, uh, and make the best of it. Yeah. So um, these things you don't learn when you study um, um, engineering or, or um, um, aeronautics. Uh, you, you learn them when you study project management. Um, so for, for us project managers, this, this, is, this is our daily bread and butter business. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, we're trying to help uh, putting this into place also into, into analog missions. Um, which brings us to the next point. What, the, what does it really mean for analog missions? Yeah, project management in virtual or or in person analog missions, yeah, it increases the fidelity of the mission because real space missions also apply project management. Yeah, NASA applies project management. Um, SpaceX applies project management. Um, Blue Origin apply, applies uh, project management. Virgin Orbit, Virgin Galactic, they all apply project management. So if we want to simulate Mars here on Earth, we should do it as, uh, as closely to the real thing as possible. And that means also we should apply the same methods and frameworks to our simulations. Yeah. And uh, maybe we discover something that helps improve project management for, for real space missions. Yeah. Maybe we, we discover how to, how to manage a risk better than we already do. And of course, it decreases the risk of the analog mission that we are, we are in at the moment. Yeah. So it, it decreases the risk of, of people getting injured, of us running out of budget, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it, it can help the mission in itself, but it also makes the, the mission more, uh, yeah, more similar to real space missions. And uh, how can we contribute in general using project management in analog missions? It, first of all, it contributes to mission participants staying sa safe, well, and healthy, which again um, contributes to, to um, the United Nations sustainability uh, goal number three. Uh, good health and well-being for everyone. And uh, maybe we can also contribute to improving the industry standards in, in this area. So uh, um, it's definitely uh, worth uh, considering uh, project management for, for analog missions. And with that, I would like to thank you very much. And I would like to open the floor for any questions or comments that you might have. Yes, Karen, thanks so much for your presentation. Uh, a lot of interesting insights of, uh, about space exploration, also how project management would be important for it. Also, we are open to questions from the audience. Everybody is welcome to open the microphone. Also write some quest questions in the chat. Uh, also, everybody is welcome to present some questions. Okay. Yes, Willie, you have a question. Karin, one question for me. Uh, you know well the, the project triangle of time, resources, and people. Um, yeah. in, 
there is in the analog mission, you're working a lot with volunteers. And uh, so the, the availability of persons and the availability of their training is not as constant and not as well known like in professional teams where, where everyone is getting paid. Uh, what is your experience on, on this aspect where the, the resources or team or available persons is quite uh, varying uh, during the analog missions as we are working with a lot of um, volunteers. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, of course. Um, it, it poses its, its challenges and the, the aim um, could only be to do it as good as possible we're not go we're not going to get to perfection uh, with uh, with uh, volunteers, and I doubt it that we will get uh, very often to to perfection with uh, professionals. Um, what we can do, of course, is to give them as as much training as possible. Um, and yes, there are also limitations because if they have a normal day job, they might not even have time for for participating in, in day long training. Um, but um, we have to do as best as we can. Yeah. We have to, to see um, that uh, we, we recruit the, the right volunteers, the volunteers which have certain specializations and volunteers who are simply just willing to learn whatever it takes to, to get better. And to, of course, there is also a risk of, of, uh, of uh, quantity, as to say the number of volunteers, uh, because that is always an issue um, that uh, we, we sometimes see that, oh, we have like uh, 20 volunteers, they all want to be part of this. And when they realize how much work it is, we're down to two. Yeah, so it's it, there is not uh, not uh, not a perfect solution. There is only the next best solution, and we we have to to strive to be good and to strive to to grow the team. We will not achieve perfection. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Sebastian is asking, is there another discipline that might complement your job as a project manager? Not really, no. <laughs> um, is there a complement uh, that might, uh, that might uh, uh, complement as a job for an architect? No, the, not really. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Willy says maybe risk management train, risk manager training, um, HSE. That that of course it covers part of project management. It covers the risk part, but it doesn't really cover the the um, the entire toolbox and skill set and knowledge area of uh, of project of project management. Yeah, if you have experience in as a health and safety engineer, yes, you are probably gonna uh, gonna make very valuable contributions to a project risk management, um, but not necessarily to um, to I don't know um, uh, planning the communication delay between between Earth and and Mars. <laughs> Yes, uh, I consider the, the both questions very interesting because uh, they are going to uh, at one of the points uh, presented by you related to uh, how, how to how to fund these 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 missions, these space missions. Uh, I believe uh, we I believe the analog missions are very important to space exploration and also uh, carrying if you like. If possible, you comment uh, how how would it be possible to 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 bring more investment to space exploration. Also, uh, these startups. Uh, it's a very important point to uh, have have the viability to space missions. I believe. 
Yeah. Um, yes, uh, certainly a val very um, valid question. Um, as a project manager, my first choice would be to hire an experienced fundraiser, but uh, that is not always possible. Um, so I have to, again, uh, make do with what I have. And uh, there, are, um, there are grants out there from, uh, from, uh, organiz from organizations like, like the European Space Agencies, the, um, but also some private organization, organizations. Um, there is, of course, the opportunity to ask organizations for, for funding. Yeah? You will have your logo uh, uh, in front of our habitat for the duration of our mission if you gi give us X amount of euros or dollars. Yeah? There, is, uh, there are opportunities like like go fund me. Yeah? There are opportunities to actually reduce the cost by, by um, getting free resources. Yeah? That can be equipment, that can be that uh, some company sponsors you with, uh, with t-shirts, let's say. Um, it, and actually also every volunteer is a resource contribution um, that the analog a mission doesn't pay for, yeah. So it's it's this the, this um, this uh, two sides of the medals. On the one hand side, you try to keep your costs as low as possible, and you 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 do everything to increase your your income. So with with sponsorships, with uh, research grants, with. Uh, paid experiments from companies or from universities. So um, yeah, it, it's difficult, but uh, then again, I'm a project manager, I'm not a professional fundraiser, so um, they might have even more ideas and, and, and better ideas. Does that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Also, we are still open for more questions from the audience. Uh, maybe just a comment from my side. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Karin, for, for a very nice presentation. Uh, I, I just would like to add that I also think that, uh, of course, it's a part of project, man project management, but it shouldn't be omitted. And I think also a lot of stress should be also put on quality management, because uh, what we see is that uh, analog missions are very complex uh, projects. It's, uh, it involves a lot of activities, human resources, everything. And also a lot of and other factors which might influence the data and data quality. And uh, most importantly, you need to monitor all factors which might have an impact on, uh, on, uh, on the quality of data and ability to, to analyze it in proper manner because it, it may often happen that uh, after the mission, you will realize that there was something what, hap what happened over there, what is interesting from scientific point of view, and you need to be able to identify the circumstances. So I just wanted to highlight that uh, quality management is maybe, maybe also another part which should be uh, more stressed uh, for, for analog yeah. mission as well. Yeah, and if the quality, um, I mean, we have the quality here as one knowledge area, but uh, Miro, you are absolutely right. Um, a low quality or not insufficient quality, again, poses a risk to the mission. Yeah, if we have, if we lose half of the data or the, the data quality is so bad that we can't we can't use it then we might not even there is a risk to us not um, to us achieving the mission goals yeah definitely quality is uh, is very important yeah really made a com uh, another comment uh, fundraising opportunities tv stations paying you something to to do documentaries yeah if if that is an option, definitely. And uh, yeah, Sebastian comments, uh, the main point is to embrace the multidisciplinary of a team and not to take too many hats uh, for ourselves. Yeah, um, we have to, we, we need generalists and specialists in, in missions. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> oh, 
Julia, you're a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, this is uh, um, this is also a valid point, and it's again, it's not, it's not that we have to define what we mean by team. The team is not limited to the analog astronauts in the habitat. The team is is, um, is many more people. It's the universities. Um, uh, supporting us with, with research. It's people funding us, companies, organizations, giving us money. It's uh, space agencies. So um, um, talking about multidisciplinarity of a team. Yes, it is <laughs> it ex extreme because projects are always across, across uh, functions and across organizational borders, sometimes also across country borders. So that's also very, very important to bear in mind. Yeah. Um, do you see a managing difference in virtual simulations coming to the last uh, two COVID years and on-site missions like, like Amade? Um, yes, of course. Um, managing um, managing teams online is always a bit different, yeah, because we lose a couple of things and we win a couple of things. Yeah, we we um, we lose some of the uh, some of the body language. We often also use some of the mimics uh, if people don't switch their camera on. Yeah, um, what is really missing is uh, is this. We have to trust each other, and uh, we usually um, one component is is tr of trust is um, trust based on relationships, and uh, we don't usually have such strong uh, relationships with people whom we might never ever have met in person, um, whom we only see on the screen. Um, it's it's more difficult to build trust with with those people than with people whom whom we know personally, um, and uh, we should also not forget um, that uh, we um, subconsciously uh, also judge people by by their smell, and that I don't mean that they didn't shower for three days, but we can smell the genetics of other people yeah um, and uh, of course we haven't uh, we haven't found a solution yet to transfer smells uh, through zoom or other platforms but um, it is a it is a big aspect so um, yeah um, this is some this is this is these are all skills that that we have to learn. Uh, how to how to compensate for for uh, what we lose in in um, a digital versus versus in person meetings, but digital meetings also um, also have advantages. Yeah, um, I could not possibly have met Julio as often as as we did um, over the past months um, in person. Yeah. So he's in Brazil, I'm in Slovakia. So it's just me, it wouldn't be possible at all to, to meet uh, that often. And we should not uh, forget that uh, the digital um, management also has advantages. Um, and we need, to, we need to compensate for the disadvantages and make good use of the advantages. Does that answer your your question, really? Thank you, yes. Okay, do we have a minute? I'm just looking at the chat. Yeah, any more questions? And of course, there is um, there are limitations to to what experiments we can do in virtual analog missions as opposed to personal analog missions. Yeah, we cannot really 
do many geological experiments unless we go out in digging in our own backyard, everyone. But uh, we can uh, we can do psychological experiments. We can we can fill questionnaires. Uh, we can do uh, literature research. Yeah. So my my suggestion is still that we do some research on what will we drink on Mars because we have spoken a lot of, about what we're going to eat and how we are going to grow it. But will we also grow coffee beans? Uh, will we drink coffee on Mars? Uh, will we have orange juice? So um, these are things that we can also at least start uh, investigating uh, during virtual analog missions. Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> So, any more questions? Any other comments? Yes, also, I, I would like to invite everyone to participate in, in some missions organized by Habitat Marti. Uh, we are based in Brazilian semi arid, northeast of Brazil. Uh, also, it's possible uh, to apply to our in person mission during this year. Also, it's happening uh, virtual missions, uh, also in our Instagram, also social media uh, like LinkedIn and Twitter. We are sharing the, the dates for the next virtual missions uh, based in, in English. Also, missions uh, based in Portuguese. And everybody, welcome to stay with us. Also, uh, this one of activities during our mission 99. And I'd like to say thanks to, to Karen, to great collaboration, also sharing important, uh, important uh, uh, knowledge about space exploration. And yes, uh, also if, if, uh, if someone would like to say something to, to complete, uh, yes, I also have a lot of Okay, Karen. Yeah, I let you uh, conclude and, and and present the last the last words. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes. Well, thank you so much for your interest in this topic and uh, for sharing an hour of your time with us here. And um, yeah, as I always say, in space there is space for everyone. So you don't have to be a project manager to be in an analog mission. Um, we, need, uh, we need data managers, we need biologists, we need medical doctors, we need divers, uh, we need physiologists, um, we need all uh, people from, from really all walks of, of life, because it's, um, if we want to live on Mars, we need everyone. We need carpenters. We need uh, painters. We need architects. Uh, we need uh, we need everyone of you ev from every walk of life. So if if you if you are interested in space exploration and you have not studied aeronautics, it doesn't matter. We will need you anyway. So um, I would highly encourage you. I mean, especially the the Virtual analog missions of Habitat Mart is, um, is a very good opportunity, like as a first step to, to see um, how, how a mission um, is basically organized. And then, um, yeah, as Professor Julio said, you are obviously uh, invited to, to, um, to join um, in, a, in a real space mission in person space um, space simulation uh, and uh, yeah if I may say so you're also invited to become a member of the Austrian Space Forum and uh, contribute there so <laughs> or any other analog uh, habitat or organization in the space industry okay uh, I'd like to say thanks to everyone. Also, we are concluding the recording.